couldn't fully trust him. And that's the thing. I put human, I put the flaws of human being and brought it up to God. What if he doesn't come through? You know. What if I never find anyone like that again? So give trust to the wrong people, just certain parts just get you know, chipped away and at the end of the day be like, <coughs> you know, who can I trust? Some of my family members don't love me. I believe that because they show it, especially from my grandmother's side. Remember clearly it's because I'm always, I'm always compared to my sister, she, my older sister, and she she's always excelling like very well in school, and uh, she's very obedient. She is, you know, she's just very loved, and she's a firstborn. And me, you know, you know, they considered me as being a bad luck charm just because of the year I was born in. I was always compared to her because I'm not as smart. I'm not, you know, I always make mistakes. You know, like I'm always so clumsy, breaking stuff. Hurting myself, and there was this one time um, I was I was being disobedient to my dad. That was my own fault. Okay, and my grandmother was always at the background, always adding stuff, like always, you know, saying bad stuff. Like you know, she's like this. She's always like this. You know, she's always so rude. Da, 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 da. And she would just add all this thing behind. And at the end of the day, I would get harder beating because of what she said, you know. And I have to reflect back. I was like, am I really that bad? Basically, that's that's the feeling that I got. Like, I remember those feelings. Like, wow, am I? Like, I know I did something wrong and I deserve the punishment. But to be demoralized? Yeah. That is, that is a whole new level. Like as a kid, you're being told like, you know, um, she's always like this and she's always rude. You know, she doesn't, she always doesn't know any better. She's, she is, uh, you know, stupid and stuff like that. So basically, yeah, words like this get thrown around very often. And that affected my self-esteem issues, I guess. And I'll be like, hey, since I can't trust my own family, who can who can I trust still? So, I guess from then onwards that developed the trust issues that I have with other people. Like feeling like, why am I never good enough? Like, why when when does it stop? Like when when will I measure up to my sister? I did I did try to win to win their affection. And I would go to go with my grandmother, you know, go go to her go to her shop and um, you know set up everything with her, you know, and stay the whole day. It was it was our our break, you know, like year end break, school break. Everyone's having fun, and here I was, like you know, working hard with her, trying to win her affections. But apparently, it's still the same, you know. And everyone everyone was just telling her like how good of a kid I was. You know, because I was helping her, da da da. But apparently, that just wasn't wasn't good enough. But what normally goes into my mind was that I won't show my real self. Because if I do, if I do show my real self, people always leave me. That's what I think. Let me just be presentable. Growing up, I have the thought that, you know, I'm, you know, people are not gonna love me for who I am. I'm always gonna drag people down. I'm always going to, yeah, I'm 
always turning people down. I'm always... Uh, Like how did it affect my relationship with other people is that I always have to be cautious. Um, fast forward, I'm in college. Like I would go to parties and I would, you know, if they drink, I'd drink with them. Yeah, I mean like I blended pretty well with, you know, that atmosphere, that environment. I felt I was accepted. I felt I was, you know, I was free for being who I was, not being condemned, not being condoned, you know, everyone has defects, everyone has flaws, that's why we are here, you know, that's why we are parting, that's why we are doing that, it's a form of release. I was in a relationship um, with someone and he was everything that I dreamed of, right, he, he, was, he was smart, he was funny, he gets my humor. He didn't have a good childhood and stuff like that. So I guess that's how we bonded. That's how how it connected us together. And we do, we do write, like both of us, we write. And for me, that's just a bonus. And he's super successful in the world too. So that, that, that was who I was with. And everything was good. Like everything went well. But at that point, I don't think in being involved in a relationship is... It, I don't think being in a relationship helps me a lot because in some, at some point, I still feel that people don't love me. No matter how hard they try, I'll be like, eh, it's not true. No one is going to love me anyway. I went to Bible school because the Lord impressed in my heart to go study the Bible more. And from there, I was converted. And... We, we still talked. It was a long distance relationship because he, he wasn't there where I went to Bible school. So as I studied more about the Bible, I grew, like my love for Christ grew more and more. And slowly I started to, you know, want to abandon the things in the world. It was so hard for me to let go. I'm just like, it just doesn't make sense, right? When you have everything planned out for you. And for the sake of religion, for the sake of Christ, just because you want to do something right, just because of you want to you wanna have something, like just because you want to be equally yoked with someone, you break off your relationship. I mean, it's just not worth it, you know? In my mind, that's how my thought process was. It just wasn't worth it. And... We went, we went backpacking together, you know, we had a lot of fun, but things changed. I wasn't the same person that I used to be. I just thought that giving up religion, like giving up what I believe in, was basically the best thing to do. Probably, you know, I don't have to compromise, I don't have to give up so much just to follow Christ. I don't have to because like other churches, you know, they would accept me for who I am. He told me, in a relationship, I do not want Christ to be in between us. I just want you all to myself. And I felt like the church is having part of you. And I don't think I would, I like that. So I told him that, hey, if that's the case, maybe I'll, I'll just leave the church then. Maybe I'll just go with you, right? But the Lord just kept convicting me. You know why I can't give up God? For, for, for that is because I know what I know is true. The experiences that I had with God, you know, that He, how He guided me, how He showed me His power, it was real. And I deep in my heart, I knew that I couldn't just give that up. I couldn't. And God was speaking to me, like, Min, when have, when, when have I ever let you down? When? Like, how? And I know, I know that His plans are the best. Why can't I trust that He is able to guide me? I couldn't fully trust Him. That's the thing. I put human, I put the flaws of human being and 
brought it up to God, you know, like, oh, what if I, what if he doesn't come through, you know, what if I never find anyone like that again? So I just, I just kept on, I just kept on persisting. But at the end, I was just like, okay, God, you know, you, you take the lead. I have to trust, like, I will trust you like how I trust, how Abraham trusts you. So if it me even if it means letting go of this relationship to pursue what you want me to do as a as a missionary that is what i had to do and to be honest that is the hardest thing for me to do who else would die for you <laughs> despite of who i was christ still loves me you know once i believe the promises of god what better way to paint love than someone dying for you despite who you are, right? How else would God show that He loves us? How else? Being rebellious, I guess. Knowing that He's real and yet choosing the wrong relationship, ready to abandon God, and He's still calling me. He's still calling me. Despite knowing that I'm gonna leave Him, He's still, he's still there for me. He's still trying to save me he's still so patient he still wants me despite the things that I did that basically discredited myself as a Christian and he still pursued me he still wants me and if that's not love I don't know what is you're not defined by people your identity is not what it's not found in what people say about you your true identity is found in Christ. People always disappoint, but God never does. And the longing that I had for trust and for love in human beings could never be quenched until I found the love of God, until I knew Him personally in my life. Let us hold on to Him and cling on to Him and believe in Him no matter what comes our way, no matter what circumstances our way. Know that it is for our best good because He will never retain the best from us. Amen? Okay, may God bless everyone today. Happy Sabbath. Thank you so much for watching our first I Am Not story. So don't forget to like and share our page and this video to support us and to be a part of our mission. Are you going to tell them about the podcast? Oh, right. Can you can you do that? Yeah. It's good. I Am Not stories is not just about sharing stories through videos, but we are also sharing stories through podcasts. And it. We will be sharing men's stories and details that we couldn't cover in this video. And we will also be sharing 
the behind the scenes of how this story came about through the help of God. So check the link down below to check out that podcast and be sure to leave your thoughts and your comments down below so that we can interact and you know chat a little bit but don't forget to like this page and share and tag a friend okay tag a friend right did you tag a friend yet yeah did you okay good